What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today we're coming in with a banger of a video. I hope you guys enjoy this one, drop a like if you do, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and also... Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. We are right next to 60,000 followers. Make sure you go follow me. I'll follow a few of you guys back. Hey, the link will be in the description below. What are you waiting on? Let's get to 60k, gamers. But one more thing I want to mention before we dive into this video is some of you very OG viewers out there might remember this video. Today we're coming in with a remaster of an old video that I had to vault quite a few years ago. This video is over 5 years old from its original posting date now, so quite a lot of you watching this probably didn't even know who I was back then. So, I felt it was very fitting to remake this because this was a very good story. So, without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now, this took place way back in my high school days. If I'm being totally honest, I don't remember if this was the end of my sophomore or beginning of junior year, but I know it was somewhere in that time frame because I hadn't gone to my alternative school yet. That's all I know. It was somewhere in that time frame. But, I mean, listen, my brain is ravaged with drugs, and the more time goes on, the less I remember the dates. I I'm bad with dates and times. I'm not so good with those either. But either way, so back on topic here. This took place back when I was around 16 years old, and at the time, I was an absolute menace with no moral compass. Now, nowadays, I would never do something like this, right? I look back at it and regret doing it, but at the same time, I recognize that when I was 16, I was an absolute degenerate fiend, and I would do whatever it took to get intoxicated. I didn't care whatsoever. So, when this opportunity was presented to me, I knew I had to take it. Now, as I said, this took place back when I was 16, and on this fateful day, I had gone over to my good friend Cody's house. Many of you know him from my videos. A lot of you who are new to the channel still probably know him if you've gone back and watched any of my old videos. But I went over to Cody's house on this day, and I would go over there pretty often, not only to hang out with him, but also to buy weed from his brother. It was kind of a double whammy. On this particular day, I remember I didn't really have any money for weed, but Cody said that he let me hit a blunt. He had a little bit of weed left, so I went over, and he said he had something to show me. Now, when I get there, after we smoke this blunt, he tells me to follow him into his room, and I'm curious, normally, when he tells me to follow him in there, it's something drug-related. He's gonna pull out some acid, he's gonna pull out something, you know? I mean, I don't know what it was gonna be, but, you know... I had very high hopes for this. So we go into his room and he opens his dresser and pulls out a fake hundred dollar bill. Now this is not a good fake. This would not pass at any store. The paper, the material of it was nowhere near right. It felt like paper towel almost. Like it felt like someone just took some toilet paper, maybe smoothed it out a little bit and was like, yo, let's just print Benjamin Franklin on this shit and pass it off. You know, I mean, this was genuinely the most awful looking fake I've ever seen in my life. I don't know where he got this. I don't know where this came from. And I feel really bad for whoever originally paid money for this fake dollar bill because this thing was atrocious, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, awful. But as soon as I saw this, I knew that we had an opportunity here. Like I just mentioned earlier, I didn't have any weed. Cody didn't really have any weed either. But I knew a whole lot of idiots, I mean complete dinguses, that we could meet up with and pass this hundred off to. And that's exactly what I did. I Listen... Like I said earlier, I feel bad about doing this now, but you know what? My fiend self at the time, totally honest here, no regrets whatsoever. I mean, this was a fantastic evening. So, I got on Snapchat immediately and started hitting up as many people as I could find that might even have a small amount of weed. I didn't even care if they were taxing us, right? Because at the end of the day, we're fucking them. So I was trying to hit up, you know, people that I maybe didn't hit up for weed as much, but my main weed guy was usually Cody's brother, so I didn't really give a fuck who we were about to finesse here. As long as I got some weed, I'm happy. Eventually, a kid responds to me who we're going to call, oh, what are we going to call him? Let's call him Jake. Now, 
Jake is someone who I don't think has ever been in any other video of mine because we were never really friends at all. I mean, I've never smoked with this guy. I've never hung out with him. I don't even know if I've really, you know, seen him many times outside of school, except every now and then I would buy weed from him. He was one of those kids who, you know, he wasn't a real plug. You couldn't buy any notable amount off him, but he'd maybe be able to get you on like a half ounce or, you know, less than that. So for someone who never had much money like myself, he was a good contact to have because his weed also wasn't the worst. It wasn't anything to get too excited about, but I mean, it was smokable. And back then, I also had no weed standards whatsoever. I'm pretty sure I would smoke a dank vape back then. In fact, I mean, I'm pretty sure I ripped a few of those back in the day. I hit a lot of fake cards when I was younger, but that's not the point, all right? The point here is I hit this dude up and I tell him, I'm like, yo... I, I got $100. How much weed are you willing to give me? And this guy hits me back with the tax. A quarter ounce. Now, mind you, you got to remember that back in high school, that was not that bad of a price for me, right? This was in like 2015. This was before weed was legal. Uh, any, you know, I don't even think Illinois had medical yet. Uh, nobody, you know, we barely knew what dabs were. Carts pretty much didn't exist yet, you know, at least out here. So, the, the whole market was so different back then. I look back at it and I'm like, wow, my stupid ass really paid a hundred for a quarter a mid, you know? Like, even if I was paying with real money, I still would have bought that quarter probably because back then, that, I mean, I didn't see a problem with that price, you know? It's like, all right. I mean, if, if there's any purple or orange on the weed, it's that gas, bro. That's that, that's that high school mentality. But either way, so Jake responds and he tells me that he can get me on a quarter ounce for that and I don't even try to negotiate I'm just like yo for sure dude sounds great let's get it going so I tell him that we're gonna meet him in the parking lot of the AMC movie theater that's about 10 minutes off from Cody's house you know a quick little cruise it's more close to the high school that we went to which was kind of a middle point for the both of us Jake and myself so worked out pretty well I hopped in the car, me and Cody, and we rode over there, and we're trying to figure out how to pass off this bill to him, because this bill is so awful that, like, if he if he spends any extended amount of time looking at this bill, it's over with for us. Absolutely over with. So we're sitting there, and we're trying to think of different ways. We're like, yo, we gotta distract him and just pass him the money real quick, you know? Or maybe, like... I don't know, maybe we just crumple it up or something, but we realized that the paper it was printed on was so soft that crumpling it up would probably just rip it. What we ended up doing was we took some singles that I had in my car. I had just a couple $1 bills, and we made it look like the money was kind of folded up right? So we took the hundred, we took a couple singles and put it behind it to make the bill feel thicker because I shit you not, if you just held this one little fake hundred on its own, it was so thin and shit paper that light would pierce through it. Like out in the sunlight, if you, let's say, held this up, it would just, light would just pour through it, dude. I mean, this, this was just the single worst counterfeit bill that I've ever touched in my life. So we decide on going Going with the single strat, the single strategy, which is, you know, we, we take a couple singles and we put them behind the hundred to make it feel thicker. So when he's holding it on the back of the bill, it feels like a real bill, you know? I mean, maybe he would find it weird that we're giving him some extra bills with a hundred, but we figured if we just folded it up, maybe he wouldn't notice. We kind of folded it in a way where the hundred was sticking out a little bit, but the ones were actually on top. We were kind of trying to mess with it on our way there and, you know, experiment with different ways of arranging the bills and seeing how we could make it pass as legit as we could. So eventually we get to the parking lot of the AMC and we're sitting there and Cody's holding the money. He's got it folded up and we've got it all set. We're ready to go. And I'm not going to lie. The idea of putting the $1 bills like in with it was absolutely genius. I, it worked like a charm. This guy pulls up and I, listen, 
One of my favorite things about Jake was he took selling weed so seriously to the point where he acted like he was in some sort of like James Bond movie with it. I think I've talked about this in a previous video before. In fact, it might have been the video that we're remastering here. But this guy would pull up and pop his trunk and open a metal briefcase just to serve you like an eight. Like, it, it would be the funniest thing ever. He would have all this shit. He'd have this big... The briefcase probably cost more than the fucking weed inside it, dude. This guy would hop out of his car. He had this little shitty, like, Chrysler fucking drop top. It was a... It was a convert... I don't remember what the name of the car was. It, it was some sort of Chrysler or something like that. He would hop out... Go to his trunk, pop that shit, open a fucking briefcase, and, like, pull your quarter ounce or your eighth or whatever it was out. It was the funniest shit ever. And it's not like it was some exotic either. I mean, some mid, dude, some swag. Imagine your plug doing that today. You'd laugh at him. You would never call that fucking idiot again. But back then, I didn't care. He could do whatever shenanigans he wanted as long as I got my weed. So... We did a quick little handoff. He pulls up next to us. He gets out of the car. He pops his trunk. And he, of course, goes into his briefcase and pulls the weed out. Now, we're sitting in the car the whole time. We don't get out whatsoever because we're trying to get out of there quick. We don't want to get out of the car. We don't want to dap him up. We want to get our weed and go. So... At this point, he had only served me maybe once or twice before this. So there wasn't necessarily a lot of trust between us. But also, you know, we'd known each other. I'd had classes with him, you know. So it's not like we were friends, but we were acquaintances enough where maybe he let his guard down a little bit and let me get away with doing this. Now, like I said before... This was so scummy of me, but you know what? My 16-year-old self didn't give a fuck. So, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm all amped up. I'm ready to go. I'm excited thinking this is going well so far. He's got the weed. He comes up to the driver's side. Cody's handed me the money already at this point, and I just hand it over to him, fold it up, and he gives me the quarter rounds. He's telling me a little bit about it. He's like, oh, yeah, he tells me whatever strain it is. I don't remember what strain it was, and we get the fuck out of there quick. I'm just like, all right, man, thanks. Gotta go. He's like, for sure. Thanks. So we get the fuck out of there. I mean, we dip. We go back to Cody's house and we are dapping each other up, laughing our asses off. We cannot believe that we just got away with this. We just got a free little quarter ounce with this piece of shit hundred dollar bill. And I was expecting any moment for Jake to blow my line up once he touched this money, but he didn't. He didn't hit me up that night. He didn't hit me up the next day. In fact, we had smoked all of his weed pretty much that night, and it took this guy about a week to hit me up about this money. A week later, I was going home from school, and I remember this so fucking vividly because he was so fucking mad about it. And back then, I thought it was funny. Now I feel bad. I wish I could pay the guy back, but you know what? I mean, I, I don't know him anymore, so whatever. Life happens. Uh, Get finessed. But back on topic, so... He hit me up on Snapchat as I was driving home one day, and I get on my phone, I get on Snapchat, and I check it, and he's like, yo, that hundred was foo, bro, and I respond to him, I'm acting stupid, I'm like, what do you mean, man, like, what are you, like, what are you talking about, you know, I, I don't know, like, well, I'm, I'm playing dumb at this point, I'm like, what do you mean, he's like, dude, I took the bill to the bank, and they said it was counterfeit. It made me fill out a bunch of paperwork about where I got it. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Of all the things he could have done with that bill, he took it to the bank. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, yo, did this guy snitch? Like, like is Cody's house about to get raided for, like, a fake? Is my, Am I about to get fucked? I mean, he didn't really know Cody. He knew me. Am I about to get fucked? I'm sitting there, and at this point, I'm getting a little nervous because, you know, it wasn't necessarily about him realizing it. I knew that that was imminent, but the fact that he had to, that he took it to the bank and had to fill out a bunch of paperwork is what sketched me the fuck out because I didn't know anything about that process. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, what did they make him? Like, did the cops come? Like, what the fuck happened there? So he's explaining to me. He's like, yeah, bro, that bill was food, dude. And I close out of the chat for a minute and I call Cody. I call him up and I'm like, yo, dude, he fucking, he knows, dude, he took the money to the bank and filled out a form, and Cody's like, oh, shit, we're sitting there discussing to each other what to do, and I'm like, I have an idea, I'm like, Cody, 
what if I just throw you under the fucking bus? And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, what if I tell him that it was your bill and I didn't know? He doesn't know you. You don't go to the same school as us, right? This is before the alternative school. So me and Cody, right? Did not go to the same place or anything. Um, you know, I mean, there was no, this guy was never going to see Cody again, ever again. I mean, realistically, it was just not going to happen. So I was like, yo, what if we just say it was your bill? Because he doesn't even know me like that. So, like, he doesn't know that we hang out all the time. And Cody's like, yo, that's kind of a good idea because then he'll kind of fuck off about it, you know? And I'm like, yeah. Let's do it. So I go back to Jake, and I'm like, yo, dude, yeah, that was that's my homie's build, man. I mean, I barely even know that guy. <laughs> I, I mean, I, that's crap. I'm so sorry he did that to you, bro. I mean, I'm, I wish I could tell you more about him, but I don't, I don't even think I could tell you what he looks like. I mean, that was my first time. I just I don't know this guy. And Jake, you know, he, he, he definitely didn't buy it, but... You know, he, at the same time, kind of just let off about it. I mean, it wasn't like this guy was chasing me down in the hallways at school, you know? He kind of just fucked off about it, which I guess it worked out in the end. Looking back at it, sorry, Jake, if you ever watch this, now that I'm an adult, I feel bad. But, you know, back when I was a kid, I would do whatever the hell it took to get high. And, I mean, to be fair, this isn't even the worst thing I ever did. I ever did to finesse someone out of some money back then, you know? I mean, dude... I would steal like $10 if I had the opportunity. Gen genuinely. I mean, I finessed a kid for 20 fucking dollars one time. Why would I do that? I was, a, I was a fiend. I was a dirty, fiend, absolute scumbag drug addict. And, you know, I'm still a drug addict and like partial scumbag and, you know, fiend here and there. I'm a little bit of all of those things still. But like back then it was really amplified. So I was really going crazy with that shit. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this remaster of a classic video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you guys want to see more remasters as well, don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed, as well as follow me on Twitter, which will be linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, gamers.